Welcome back to part five of my Wonder Kids series. Today we take a look at defensive mids and center mids. So if you can take a look behind here, we see that uh, the server data playlist is live of the shortlist of my guys, 57 total. Uh, these guys are basically, you know, 21 and under players who kind of fit the mold of future superstars or current superstars if they're good enough already. Uh, we'll start from high to low uh, based on their rare price and we'll go through the entire list. Some of these guys I'll kind of just talk about quickly. Some, uh, you know, I'll just kind of name drop and we can keep this moving a little bit. Thanks for coming here. Hit that like button that helps me out with the algorithm. So since you're already here, might as well hit the like button. Appreciate it. So we're going to start off with someone everyone knows, Jude Bellingham. Uh, he's a stud. He is the best one on the list by far, in my opinion. Um, he's going to leave in the summer window. It's just kind of where to, in my opinion. Uh, Liverpool are the main suitors, but Real Madrid, PSG among favorites as well. So it'll be interesting to see where he lands. Uh, I would like to see him at Liverpool just because the midfield is really where they need uh, <clears throat> players to, in this window. Uh, they're linked with a couple other players in this list, but uh, you know I would like to see him there. Take a look at his prices. He's expensive, but he is one of the best under 23 players, and he has multiple, multiple years. He's through 2027, and yeah, you look at his rare price, and it's uh, just over 3 ETH, but wow. Yeah, he uh, he's unbelievable. Nothing more to say about him. Leads us into a next wonder kid, 18-year-old Gavi uh, for Barcelona. He's unbelievable as well. Same kind of thing. Uh, a little bit less expensive. You take a look at his rare. It's 1.45. Uh, his scores are significantly lower, though. So, uh, And a guy that has all the upside in the world. He played for Spain, the World Cup. Uh, AA, decent. But, I, you know, I think if you're looking at the two, Bellingham's just clearly a little bit higher than him. Next up. We have uh, Javi Simmons for PSV. He rejected a contract at PSG uh, in the summer, so he signed with PSV at home, and that's a crazy move for a guy that broke into the PSG first squad. He is 0.12 on his price here. I wonder why the image isn't loading. But you take a look at those some of those high scores, 100, 90, 84. Uh, he just played and scored uh, last time out for a 72. Interest in the EPL, I've seen, but I, I don't see him going anywhere this year. Uh, maybe summer he could make another move, but I think he likes it at PSV. So, very interesting, uh, very high talent for PSV. Next guy who's also linked uh, a bunch of places, Chelsea's bid for Caicedo has been rejected. Liverpool was interested, but then they said they're not making a move till summer. Uh, but Brighton has been a, a bright spot. For the league, uh, they've got rid of Trossard, and uh, you know they, Caicedo played in the World Cup. He's he's a talent for sure. Uh, you look at some of these scores: uh, the three 0 thrashing of Liverpool, it just put up nice AA game uh, assist and a nice AA game against Everton. Didn't even uh, didn't play. It was that yellow card suspension, yeah, against Arsenal. Uh, he was definitely missing that one. But you just look at his scores, and he's very solid. So if you throw him in the Liverpool uh, lineup there, that price is honestly not the worst thing in the world, but something you definitely want to take into consideration. If you look at his previous, I wouldn't pay the floor, but 0 0.08 for a guy that might be, you know, he has a lot of links. Uh, but at the current state, is L563. So at Brighton, he can still put up the scores. It's just about uh, kind of where he goes. Next one, we have a youngster. So he is kind of taking the platform by storm. His unique just was auctioned off. And it's Warren Zaire Emery for PSG. He is 16 years old. And let's take a look here. He has made it, uh, some sub appearances. And he just started the last time out. So uh, as a 16-year-old for PSG, that's you know truly unbelievable. Uh, crazy. I would not pay his price what he's going for now, though. It's I know it's not a lot of cards on the market, but man, for his limited to be that high with some of those guys, and he hasn't even really scored yet. Uh, as far as I'd take Caicedo any day. Uh, if you take a look at the under 23, it's through 2030, which is absolutely insane. Um, Arsenal said that they're interested, but PSG said he's off the market, which makes sense. Next one uh, is a guy who's kind of tailed off a little bit as far as, you know, up in the world. Uh, 
Kamavinga for Real Madrid. If we take a look at his scores, he's just not starting. He's a sub. He uh, When he does start, he hasn't been great. Uh, he had a nice performance here, 31 AA and 61 minutes against Girona. But it, it's kind of, he starts here, sub, 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 starts here. Uh, he had some high scores back here, but uh, it's just kind of been disappointing if you held one of his cards and his price has come down a significant bit. One little tidbit that was interested in, Dortmund wanted to include him in any sort of uh, Bellingham deal. So if you see Real in there, there could be a player swap and some money, which would be very interesting for Kamavinga, who's only 20, uh, to kind of make, I, I think he would smash at Dortmund. Uh, I think he would be a great fit and... Honestly, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You know, transfers usually are negative, but boy, that wouldn't be too bad at all. Next one is a guy who kind of, he's 19. I can't believe he's 19. I thought he would be like 22 by now. Uh, if you like football manager, he's like a mainstay. Seems like he's been everywhere. Uh, it's Mariba. So his scores are not very good. He's at Valencia right now. He's loaned, uh, but he is owned by Red Bull Leipzig. If we take a look here... Nothing really to scoff at. Nothing really that great. A couple of nice AA performances. Uh, but whenever he's a Valencia, he just, you know, he was so-so. Uh, <clears throat> it'll be interesting. Valencia can buy him. Will they? I think they will uh, at the end here. But no decision has been made yet as far as I could tell. Uh, next one is Desire Due for Renz. And... You'll see a couple Rens guys on here, and it's crazy the talent that they've had. We talked about Kamavinga, he came from there. Uh, you look at his price, pretty high um, for a guy who has talent for sure, but isn't like a mainstay starter. So some of these guys that are priced pretty high, it's kind of crazy. You know, he scored twice off the bench here, definitely had some hype going on there. He has been good when he's in the lineup, but he's not in the lineup full time. You know, he's not a first team starter right now. He's more of a, is he going to be great in a couple of years? Most likely, but he's only 17. Uh, this is kind of a down the road, but if you're paying that much for a limited, you, you'd rather get somebody lower down this list that you can get utility with right now. Uh, I think part of that is he only has 104 limited 15 rares so far. So that price might be, uh, coming down here in the near future. Next one is a guy that if you are, you know, into the platform, Kent Taylor is a stud. Uh, look at his L5, you wouldn't think that. But I'm saying like last year, there was a time where a lot of the winning lineups had Kenneth Taylor in them uh, just because he was so solid, solid getting 70 pluses and then it did trail off. But take a look, just the 93 this year, IX just hasn't been the same team that they have been in previous years. Uh, he has put up nice scores, but... It's crazy. Um, I mean, you look, look at the current form. Draw, draw, a World Cup. Um, draw against Emin. Vitez, draw, lose the PSV. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's crazy to see. Uh, he's only 20 years old. Uh, there is Man United interest. Uh, there is kind of links there with Ten Hag. And one to watch for sure. But at his current price... I think it might be a buy low. Uh, just take a look at his price graph real quick. Just curious about his all. I would think it spiked whenever he was killing it. We've had two significant dips. And if you look, it's the same price that was at, I mean, all the way back in February. So it has spiked. It's come back down. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, if you're looking for a guy that has the upside to do it, still is young. You just have to kind of fade a move away. Next guy is Luka Sucic from... Red Bull Salzburg. He's a guy who is, uh, that was just the World Cup, but he's been putting up some pretty solid scores. He does kind of get a little bit dependent on uh, decisives, but look at these last two AAs, which kind of uh, have been crazy. 23 and 41 before the World Cup, getting into some nice form. Uh, some of those lower scores, but... You know, I, I think he has a lot of upside for sure. If you go back to last year, I know Salzburg is not the same team whatsoever they were last year. But uh, if you look at last year, this current form was unbelievable. And if you're saying that you can get this guy for 0 .04, uh, it's definitely interesting. The caveat to that is he's on a lot of radars. Uh, Lazio, Liverpool, teams like that uh, definitely have shown some interest. I haven't heard anything locked in just yet, but... 
looking at those prices, not the worst thing in the world, especially, uh, you know, uh, if you're a Sesco owner and if Red Bull goes off, you're probably going to get some decisives there. I'm a Sesco owner. I've thought about adding Sucic to that, but that's just so volatile that, uh, you know, I don't think that's something that I'm going to do. <laughs> Next one up, we have another Salzburg player, uh, Lucas Gorna. Same kind of price, a little bit cheaper. Uh, if we take a look here, so he has not played the last two. Uh, the injury is an ankle injury. I don't really know too much from it. He moved from St. Etienne in the summer, and definitely one to watch as a 19-year-old. Uh, before the injury, he was getting some significant time at CDM. Um, some nice AA, but not like your upside that you're really looking for. He's just a talented guy that once he gets... You know, he's still 19. Once he gets maybe a year under his belt at Salzburg, I think maybe next year might be the, the breakout year for him. Next one is a guy that's kind of went way down, uh, Ryan Gravenberch. So since coming over from Ajax uh, to Bayern, boy, he just, you kind of saw it coming. This is kind of one of, where, <laughs> one of those where the card just goes to die. So if we take a look at his all games, he was a great card. <laughs> I wasn't around during this uh, era of so rare, but just look at all those nice scores. And then once he's got to the new setup, uh, he's just a super sub. Two starts in, in the entire time since he's been here at Bayern. And it's just a guy, I know the price is like way down from what it once was. If we look, uh, we'll just do limited and we'll go all time. I mean, you know, he was spiking at 0.33. Obviously, that was at Ajax. But, I mean, he has fallen off an absolute cliff, but rightfully so. I can't consciously buy him, but he is a talented guy. It just might take a loan move or, or something to get some first-team football. I'm not really sure what the answer is. It's tough to break into Byron's team. Maybe next year he'll break into the team and, and be a part of it and then bounce back. You know, it's the prices are very low, so do with that whatever you want to do. But uh, that's a hold-your-nose kind of thing. Uh, first American of the bunch, so uh, Busio uh, for Vene Venezia, and they bought him, but they got relegated, and he still went there. The only thing with this, he's not getting full-time starts. He was for a chunk there, but he's a sub uh, at times, which you would think in a ser Serie B team, he would be getting some looks. He doesn't have limited cards. Uh, he does have rares, but since making the move from Sporting KC... Uh, you would like to see more out of him. He's 20, so he's still young. All these guys are young, but uh, so he still has time. But uh, it, he's a talented guy that kind of has to make something happen. These scores are telling because he's a sub, but even when he does get the starts, not great. Uh, and that's in a second tier league. Next one. Uh, a lot of these guys are kind of guys that you know have been around, but. They need game time. They are struggling a little bit. So that's uh, Ravella for Roma, or sorry, for Juventus. Uh, and he's at loan. He's on loan at Monza in the Serie A, who have some interested, interesting guys, to say the least. He's played really well uh, for Monza. And if you just take a look, you know, they had some clean sheets here, a nice stretch of three wins in a row, some nice scores. Uh, you see back when he was with Juventus, he was a sub at times. So him getting his game time is really nice. But what happens at the end of this year whenever he's you know not at Monza anymore? Is he going to get time at Juventus? They just had that 15-point deduction. Um, it's just tough to see his future. So you know if you're buying in, if you're trying to get a little bit out of this year, great. But uh, moving forward, it's just a lot of murky futures with, I mean, that could be with anyone though. Next one, uh, Wakey actually just had this in his post. I had him in my uh, shortlist as well. He bought him. I do not know him yet. Leslie Ugo Chukwu, uh, another Rens player. So uh, he is kind of a more established, it seems, as a starter. And he, he does have subs in there. But his scores aren't amazing. But I really think they could see an uptick. You see a lot of nice AAs, 21, 10, 10, 15, 15, 17, you know, double-digit AA games. Uh, he's just solid. So uh, as far as his L15, it's 45. He can get a 50-ish plus pretty much every time out there. Uh, so that will 
kind of boost up with him. So with the new capped modes, it might be interesting to see like some of these guys, especially him. He's only 18. Uh, the only issue I have is Arsenal and Spurs are interested in him. So if he makes the move, will they loan him? Uh, you know, I don't see him break him into the teams just yet uh, there. So next one, we're going to go to South America, Alan Varela. So if we take a look, he is just, it's not an injury. It's just a indirect card suspension. So uh, nothing to worry about long term. Newcastle is interested in this window, so that is something to definitely watch. If we take a look at his time with Boca, he had some really nice scores last season. Uh, this is a guy that if you're playing America and he doesn't get the switch, uh, he is very, very interesting, uh, especially at this price. So if you're playing limited, I wouldn't mind him at all in your America squad. I know there's some MLS guys who maybe, maybe have a little bit more upside, but he is a really solid guy, and especially if you're playing capped, you know, 55 at 52. So that might help the cap. That might be a little high. You know, I need to play around with these just to see like the combination that's going to work. It's going to be a, a whole new game uh, for some of these modes. But you take a look at his rare, but it's, you know, 0.25 is not terrible for a guy who can put up this really solid scores. And he's going to start pretty much every time out there. Uh, is Boca one of the best teams? Absolutely. So. Uh, nothing to kind of worry about there. You see the stretch. They had a really nice stretch the end there. So uh, if you're looking for an Argentinian, and uh, we're going to go back to back with that and go with Maximo Perone. Uh, Perone, one of the two. Uh, he was just signed for Man City. So uh, I had him in my short list. I was going to take him out, but he is talented. Uh, he's not going to play at Man City, obviously. Um, so you'd really like to see a loan here. Will they loan him? That will be interesting. It would be nice if they sent him back to get some game time because he he was out a while. Um, this stretch here, I believe he was injured, then came off a sub, uh, got some more game time. Then he did start the last game of the season. And if you look before that, he was starting. He had some upside games. So uh, definitely a situation to monitor. If they kind of say, hey, we're going to loan him out, uh, loan him back to Velez, uh, interesting for sure. And another guy that uh, in the midfield wouldn't be the worst guy to have on your under-23 team. Next one, uh, notice a trend here. Another Argentinian, uh, Carlos Alcaraz and... He did sign with Southampton. He was at Racing Club, as you can see from the uniform. His price right around the same here. Uh, again, same thing, Southampton. So he played a decent amount, but uh, right here he had that red two-game su suspension. Came off the bench, scored. Just kind of they rotate a little bit, and he does have that upside, though. Again, uh, if you hear that they're going to loan him back, that's great. Will he get into Southampton's lineup? I just, I don't, I just don't see it. But I could be wrong. So let me know in the comments if you think I am wrong. Uh, so let's bounce away from South America and go to Portugal. And Dario Asugo, he is a very talented guy. It's just he's 17 years old. And the price is low enough, but a guy that doesn't really start. Uh, the concerning part is he got in uh, after 82 minutes. He did get a red. So uh, will they kind of trust him back in that starting lineup after really not playing that much? I don't know. But yeah, for sporting, they have a lot of young, talented guys. And he's a guy that in the future, I, I really think he's going to be a absolute beast in the midfield. So uh, one for the future, doesn't really have utility now, but one to just kind of stash away. And a lot of these guys, I put them in my short list, I stash them away, I look how they're doing. Did someone start? Are they kind of getting into some form? Things like that. I'll look at that uh, and then make a decision from there. Next one uh, for Hoffenheim, there's no links in the window to Tom Bischoff, and he's right now just going to stay at Hoffenheim. Uh, if we take a look at his scores, He's only had one sub appearance, and it was against Bayern. Uh, so he's another guy that very high upside. You know, uh, if you look at kind of the youth German national team, things like that, uh, that's kind of where I get some of these guys. Uh, are they playing in the youth setup? Um, are they getting international caps at the youth level? And do they have upside? That's kind of 
just where I'm at, 17 year old. It's really hard to project whenever they're under 18, but we've seen people kind of break out. And a lot of these guys, they can break out at any time. So another guy that I'm interested in. Next one, uh, Barcelona's monitoring this guy, but no links as of lately. And that is Baterina from Zagreb. So this guy's interesting, especially at the all the guys that we've seen uh, don't play as much. Here's a guy who Zagreb rotates and it's frustrating at times, but he does get some game time. But the nice thing is he is probably going to get a sub roll. So it's playable, but <laughs> if you can find the you know the pattern, he's playable. Uh, he does get decisives. That's that's the big thing here. He uh, he will play an attacking role. I could have probably used him for attacking mid role, uh, but he's more of a center mid usually. But he just kind of for Zagreb. Zagreb has started playing. He's 19 years old, but one for the future and someone that I'm definitely interested in. Next one, uh, if you're a fan of the Prem, which should be coming, uh, Onana for Everton. He is young. He is talented uh, for an Everton team who has looked pretty horrendous uh, this season. You take a look. He's coming off that uh, loss against Southampton. Man, they needed that one. Uh, relegation battle. He scored uh, and had 36 AA for a 96.5, which is unbelievable. Uh, for Everton, they just, you know, they're not in great form. He struggled. Um, he struggled just because, you know, them conceding, things like that is hurting him uh, and his ability to score higher with a better team around him. Uh, but very interesting. He is a very talented guy. Uh, I think they dropped like 33.5 million on him. So, um, they rate him high. He's 21, so he just made the cutoff. Very interesting guy. Next one, we have Roma's Bove. Uh, he was linked to Sassulo and a Lesse, I believe, uh, had a transfer lined up, but it just fell through. So he will be leaving Roma, so that's kind of why I put him in. But he started last time out, which is, I think they just put him in the shop window. I could be wrong about this, uh, just based on... I don't know. Uh, he's come off the bench pretty much every other time. And I, I just think for the window, they would like to get rid of him. It's kind of everything's leaning towards that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. If he gets a move to a smaller team, he might jump right in there as a 20-year-old. And depending where he goes, the game time might make him a, a lot better of an option. Next one is Ricci for Torino. So Torino sometimes is the place where cards go to die. <laughs> but uh, if we take a look here, it's just it's just average, just average scores. Uh, it, he has times where he does score well, uh, but he's getting game time at least. He's 21 years old. Uh, I think he has a decent amount of upside. I think he's a very talented player. Uh, as far as do his scores translate uh, as being a good player? Not as much right now, but uh, one to watch in the future. A lot of these guys are that way. Back to America. So this is a guy that personally I really like. Um, one of my favorite uh, U.S. national team players is Yunus Musa. And he's at Valencia. Move not expected until summer, but I feel like he will be on the move this summer. Uh, Arsenal and Chelsea rumblings. I mean, they've been the talk of the entire window, it seems. Uh, but he is really talented. Uh, as far as his scores, though, they don't really translate. So he's he's played really well. He's getting he's getting the AA games. Uh, that you like to see the twenty one point two out there. But is the upside there? So he had two decisives here. He did have the upside here against uh, Atletico, but it's kind of here and there. It, it's not a guy that you want to kind of put in your lineup because he's not going to absolutely smash it. You took a look, take a look at his L15. If they sell the specialist contest at the end of the month, I mean, you could put him in your specialist lineup and maybe he goes off for 60. Uh, maybe he has a 20 AA game. That'd be great. But uh, kind of in your just under 23 lineup, I don't think yet. He is just 20. Uh, and a guy that I really like in real life, just not as conducive in the so rare game. Next one, this guy, very surprising. So uh, he did just make a move for 100000 uh, That's it. That was the price tag to move to Leverkusen. So uh, a steal, in my opinion. Um, you know, he didn't really play for Club Bruges. Uh, you know, looking back, just two appearances there. Um a start here, 45 minutes, and then a sub on. 
Interesting guy. I, I think he's really talented. He's 18 years of age. I think Leverkusen have some young guys that they've really molded, and I think you give him a couple more years. I would not buy at this price, even to hold for a few years. But he is a talented guy that uh, I think Leverkusen will do a good job with. It's just he's got to get game time, and uh, the path to game time is, isn't there right now. All right, we're down to like the last 15. We're getting there. It's a, it's a big list. Uh, Kian Fitz Jim. So he is 19 years old for Ajax. They are starting to mint his cards. And uh, if we just take a look, he has been on the bench a couple times. And that's kind of what made me think of him. So Ajax have not been good. We've talked about it. But uh, if it's a guy that's coming off the bench and eventually will make his way in the team, and he has some upside because he's 19 years old and he is highly rated in the community. Next one for Vigo, uh, Juventus. So had said that they're interested if uh, Luis Ocampos took the director position. Uh, so we'll see what today's news has to do with that. He was very interested in him. So Vega is interesting because he is in the lineup uh, and he is playing in the top league in Spain. So uh, he's playing assist here, goal here, a red and a goal, rare uh, combo there. But some some nice scores here. He is getting decisive. He is kind of uh, decisive-based, but he's getting game time, and he is in a starting lineup. And moving forward, if you're playing the La Liga Santander, uh, Beta might be a guy that, you know, just to look at to maybe throw in your roster because he's young and he's talented. Next one, we go to France, and we're going to go with Johan Le Pennant. And he plays for Lyon. He... Ignore that. It's just a glitch. Um, he has started a, a decent amount. Sub, start, sub. Um, just left on the bench. But take a look at the scores. Not great. I just kind of... These two games right here kind of were pretty amazing. So in a 22.6, 39.6 AA games in back-to-back -back starts. So it seems like he's starting to subbing, starting to subbing. But then that has kind of been mixed up here after the World Cup break. He's 20 years old. One to watch for the future. Cheap-ish price uh, that could go up with some higher scores. And uh, instead of this substitute, maybe turning into a starter here, uh, maybe within the next year. Uh, Veronk, I never know how to say his name, so we're just going to go with Aster. Uh, for Milan, loan to buy clause at Milan. I think they're going to pick it up. I would, I would think so. Uh, he has just been a sub, though. So uh, these last guys, I'm just going to kind of move through. Um, Andy Diof. Doof uh, for Ren, another Ren guy, and he's on loan at ba Basil, and he is starting. So the loan is getting him some game time, uh, some really nice scores as well. So he is scoring, he is getting assists, he is getting AA, all the above. So he's a guy that's kind of breaking out here, some nice scores. You know, he's a decisive way for absolutely smashing. Uh, he hasn't had that super high upside. But he's getting greens left and right. So uh, I, I really like him. He's 19 years old. But uh, will he come back to Ren and be in the starting lineup? Uh, I'm not really sure. So one to watch. Another PSG guy who's just minting cards right now. 27 limiteds in four uh, rares. He's 18 years old. Kari. And he has not... He's not been in the lineup, but uh, he was on the bench once. So that's kind of, he does have upside. He's been good at the academy, PSG Academy. And what kind of made it uh, the upside is Bayern was interested in him. Uh, they didn't sell him to Bayern, but if Bayern's interested in you, you have to be, uh, you know, the upside has to be there. Next one, we're going back to Lyon, uh, El Arouche. And he only has 53 limiteds and six rares. He hasn't gotten any game time, uh, but he was a sub way back at the beginning. So it, it's another long term. He's 18 years old. He has a lot of upside. Uh, extended his Lyon contract in May, uh, and he was part of Lyon's training camp whenever they went to Spain after the World Cup break. So I'm thinking that he might be a part of the team moving forward, uh, especially if he was in that training camp. I know they, they do select younger uh, players during that, but I think he might be... You know, on the bench, maybe make his first appearance within the next, you know, half of the season. Uh, next one, we have Chibi. We'll go with that. 
And he's a guy that has been starting, and he's playing a striker role, which uh, whenever I was doing my research, he was kind of coming up as a cam slash central mid player, but it seems like he is moving forward. I did include him in this video just because I had him listed as a center mid, and whenever I was going through uh, Y Scouts, it was kind of like his position on the field seemed more central, uh, but he has been playing striker. 20 years old, one for the future, uh, and one for... The now, kind of, uh, as far as his price is not the worst thing in the world, and he is playing right now. We'll just touch on this real quick. Uh, he's still in Ukraine, Sudakov. Uh, eventually, I believe he will leave Ukraine. You know, they are not covered uh, other than Champions League. So, uh, a guy to watch for sure, especially if he makes a move. But other than that, nothing right now. Uh, Kamara for Dortmund, MCL knee injury. Um, upside but he is injured right now so i wouldn't buy into him although his price is pretty cheap i wouldn't buy into him just because he is on an injury uh unless you're looking to flip whenever he comes back but he's part of the u19 setup so he's not even with dortmund he's still 18 but i uh, want to watch eric martel he was just signed from leipzig for 1.6 million last uh summer interesting guy he uh does have some upside he has been starting for colm and uh not the best scores but he does have the option time to time to do well uh, if you look last year at Sol or sorry not at Salzburg at Austria Vienna he was very solid and look at all those scores so uh, the move he at least is starting it's just the scores haven't translated because a uh, different league tougher for them uh, especially when you're losing your last three but he's putting up 22.3 AA in a game they lost 2-0 that is nice to see that is very encouraging for a guy who scored nicely uh, in the matrix before. So one that at his price, that is not the worst buy in the world whatsoever. Milanesi, uh, so he was signed from Roma for 750000 in the summer. And he is interesting, but you know he's not really getting the burn that you're thinking uh, he would. He did play last year on loan at Alessandria. Uh, he had some nice scores but he's just not translating yet. Uh, I do think he is talented. He was with Roma, but uh, he was signed. So he's getting top-level experience. It's just, will he see that boost next season? A lot of these guys I'm looking at, like, next season, are they going to have that boost for next year? And some of these guys will. A uh, guy from the U.S. who I didn't think I would be putting on here, but it's Tanner Tessman, uh, another guy for Venezia. Uh, interesting, I... You know, I didn't think I'd have him on here, but he is starting for Venezia, where Abusio is not, and he is putting up some decent scores. Uh, I do think he does have a little bit of upside. Um, he does have those big games. He does have those bad games. So if you can find your in-between with him. Interesting. Uh, FC Dallas product. Uh, just want to mention him. He doesn't have the biggest upside in the world, but he's still only 21 and interesting. Uh, Swedberg for Celta Vigo. And another guy, he's 18. He was signed from uh, Hammurabi in June. He just hasn't really come into the team. He was a sub for 33 minutes. He is on the bench. I expect him to start playing a little bit more. Uh, moving forward, he's still only 18. Next one, Fulha for Porto. So uh, another one for the future. He's not really playing. He was a sub a couple times, but really just not playing. Uh, one to watch in the future, though. And he does have upside. A lot of these guys, same thing. So another guy, Benfica, same kind of thing. If we look back, he was uh, playing uh, from time to time. He started a little bit last year for Benfica. But this year, not so much. Uh, Paulo Bernardo, one to watch for the future. Again, as all these guys are. Uh, all caps, so you know it's real. <laughs> Koba Lean for Oviedo. And his price has gone up. So again, I don't want to skip that too quick. You see his price graph, it is rising very quickly, uh, it, and here's why. So he has come off the bench in the last three matches, and he has had a decisive in all three. So um, he started before, and could he start again? Yeah. Uh, I. Whenever I was doing my scouting, I honestly have never heard of this guy until he just popped off. Uh, but as a 21-year-old, he is kind of doing pretty well uh it is a second tier league um so it could be interesting if he starts getting some minutes and if he's doing this in that little time uh it might be a guy that if you can find a nice matchup to kind of start 
picking up. Uh, I don't like his limited price as far as right now, especially how high it's been on the rise. Maxime uh, is the next one for Siska Moscow. And he's a cheaper guy. He starts every once in a while. I was a little bit confused uh, why he kind of has turned into a sub, but he did start a, a big stretch there with some nice scores. Uh, Russian League doesn't come back for another like month. They're kind of like a, the MLS schedule almost, uh, maybe late February. So a uh, guy to watch to see how they line up if he does get some more game time. But he is young, 21, and has some upside. Last stretch, we got the last 10. Uh, so we are on a guy that is on loan at Luzerne, Diambu, and he is at Rebel Salzburg. So uh, you see the up here that coincides with uh, the loan to Luzerne uh, after not really getting any burn at Salzburg. Next one, Warren Bondo for Monza, another Monza player. It's great to see all these Monza players. Uh, he was at Nancy. They were relegated uh, from League Two, so he moved in the summer. We see he only has 55 limited and 9 rare. Lower price. He is just a sub right now. He has come off the bench a few times, but one for the future. 19 years old, one to watch. Christian Medina, another Boca baby. Uh, lower scores. One minute. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, he has started. He has a mixture. He's not a, a set-on starter for Boca. Prices aren't that bad. Uh, 20 years old. Could he see an increase this year? Especially if this was last year. You can see how he did last year. I think you get an extra year, especially in like Brazil and Argentina. It seems like that next year, th there's some big jumps to be had. So guy that needs to be on the radar. Uh, okay, Marco Bulat for Zagreb, uh, another one for Zagreb, and his price is on the up and up as well. He is starting to get roles as a sub, as you can see here in the graph. He is becoming part of the squad, uh, at least coming off the bench. Will he get starts coming up here soon? Uh, Bruno Pekovic is out for like three to four weeks, for what I saw. Uh, you know, that might shift some people around and maybe he'll get some uh, game time. Okay, next guy. So I know I've sped through. This is a guy I'm watching. So David uh, Aela for Portland Timber. So I, I'm big into the MLS. I kind of watch MLS pretty heavy, and that's kind of where I structure my team just because I live in the U.S., and uh, it, it's on. They have an Apple TV kind of subscription this year that you can kind of see everything. I kind of like him uh, as a buy low for next season. So this isn't a this season. Uh, this is a 100% of next season. So Diego Chara is in the current role that he would play. So Diego Chara is 36 years old. Uh, I believe 36. And this is his last year of the contract. Uh, he and Yimmy uh, play, or is it Jimmy? Jimmy Chara. It's Y-I-M-M-I, -M -M but I think it's pronounced Jimmy. And this guy is dirt cheap. Uh, I am definitely going to buy one of his rares if I can get him around that 0 0.05 and just sit on him for a year. Uh, he came from Estudiantes last year. And if he gets into that role, this Portland Timbers team is really good. Uh, in my opinion, they have some s super talent. Uh, Santi Moreno, uh, he might be gone next year. I would think he'll probably be gone next year, which kind of stinks for the team. But they just got in Evander. They're kind of on the up and up, and I think him sliding into the lineup next year might be really interesting. So I just want to give a tidbit on that. He did come off the bench. He did start a little bit. The scores weren't super high, but I think he's going to be an AA monster at times if he can get into the lineup uh, next year whenever Char leaves. So Char is 36. He probably will retire. Um, but Char is a motor now, too. He still puts up some nice AA. All right. Uh, Oscar Frelo for Gladbach. He signed from... Uh, Michelin, and uh, I think that was in June. And, you know, interesting guy, upside, just not getting any playing time. And I don't see him getting any playing time in a couple years, maybe even. Matazzo, next up for Monaco. Uh, same kind of situation, but for Monaco, he is getting subs. He started a couple games, but he seems like he's still away. Francho Serrano for Zaragoza. Um, if we take a look at his scores... He is on a nice little up and up. So he has started the last six matches. Uh, it is a second tier league, but it is good to see him getting starts and him putting up better scores than he originally did. Uh, he was on my radar before and now running in some nice form. Uh, Abiza. So 
the Leeds man, uh, Bagoge, is on loan at Ibiza, and you take a look at the spike there. Uh, that is due to you know him getting into the lineup, starting playing a little left mid, a little striker. Uh, again, he's in the center mid video, but he is kind of he can play a lot of different positions. But I treat him as I know they say left attacking mid. I had him in my center to center mid ish kind of range, but uh, maybe I should have had him in the left attacking mid. Uh, Segovia for Sampdoria, uh, another guy that's 19, one for the future. Turrientes for Sociedad, 20 years old. Uh, if you look at his scores, it's, you're going to see the same thing. But I, I do want to say that he has been part of it. Sub, he played against Sheriff uh, and had a 25.8 AA game in that one uh, in the start. So he has been sub, 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 and then out of the squad. One to watch, uh, but for him to kind of put up those numbers and get those starts as a 20-year-old is interesting. Last two, uh, Daniel Samick. So Liverpool links a year ago, which is interesting, and everyone, everything that I've read about him is he's modeled his game after Frankie De Jong, and uh, he's he's a playmaker, and that's what he calls himself. So uh, Lise, you know, he has links other places. So if Liverpool's interested in him, he should be talented. I watched some of the highlights for him, and you know, he is pretty skilled with the ball and one to watch. He's 18 years old, so he uh, only has seven limited and one rare. But one that you know I'm watching, and it, it is funny to see like some of the comparisons. And the last guy, Marco Bertini, uh, he is at Lazio, and kind of same thing that a lot of these guys. Upside, stash him away, kind of keep him on a short list, and see if he can break into the team or get a loan opportunity. So there are the lists. We flew through them. Some of them at the end. Uh, this is a 40 plus minute video. I know they're long, but. Hey, uh, I appreciate everyone watching and stay tuned because we're going to have our wingers, uh, left wing, attacking mids, uh, and then we're going to have our cams, our attacking mids, just regular attacking mids, and then our strikers. Then we're done with the series. So uh, I'm going to do this once a year. So like whenever 2024, January comes around, I'll do it for that as well. And I hope you guys are liking the series. Again, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. See ya.